This is B of C Live, the video and podcast series of Business of Cannabis. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com. Coming up on BFC Live, our conversation, we will focus, uh, we will have a conversation with Milan Patel. He's the co-founder and CEO of Pathogen DX. They are an Arizona-based company providing DNA-based pathogen testing and solutions for the cannabis, botanical, food, and agricultural industries. We'll also talk about a little bit like uh, COVID testing. So stay tuned for that conversation with Milan Patel. Milan, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to have you because I feel like we could be like really be cannabis geeking out in a second if I if I understand what the company does. Tell us a little bit about Pathogen DX and uh, then we'll get into it, okay? Absolutely, yeah. No, it won't even take more than 20 nanoseconds to geek out on the cannabis side of it. But uh, again, yeah, thanks for having me, Jay. Uh, we truly appreciate being on this show with you. Um, Pathogen DX, we're really, really a... Uh, we're an Arizona-based uh, uh, platform diagnostics company. So what does that mean at the end of the day? I think, you know, for the last two years now, COVID, every single diagnostic company that develops tests for COVID, right? We develop tests for cannabis, as well as COVID, as well as food and agricultural and environment. So for us, we've developed the ability to test for different pathogens that really impact the cannabis industry, both in terms of human health, as well as the plant health and, and also the environmental. And so that's what we do. And, and, and uh, business, I assume is good because not only is there obviously there COVID and that diagnostics, but also cannabis and the cannabis industry in Arizona and around Arizona too is booming. Talk a little bit about sort of how, how that's going and, 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 and my understanding, just reading your website, you do some proprietary things that happen faster than the norm, which can only mm -hmm. be a good thing in the cannabis industry, which moves quickly in time. Time at testing labs and diagnostics can be, you know, time not on shelves, I guess. Yeah. So overall, thank you for that question. Business actually has been really good, uh, both on, on the, the cannabis side. It's been pretty steady, surprisingly, even with the pandemic. And I think it's because at the end of the day, um, you know, cannabis, uh, the cannabis uh, growers and the, the cannabis testing labs and even the dispensers were considered essential businesses for some reason in certain states. And I think, you know, the, the states actually sort of categorized the, uh, you know, that type of business relatively well, given the fact that people were quarantined in their homes for the last 24 months and continues to be so. So it's, a, it's been a positive signal in terms of overall business. Um, and then on COVID side, we are, everybody knows, I mean, testing is, is, is all at an all time high with Omicron and we continue to try to catch up on that front. So, you know, for the foreseeable for future, it looks very, very, you know, uh, upbeat overall. Um, what's different about our technology going on to the latter half of your question is that we basically have taken um, you know, how testing has been done for almost a decade or up to a century now, where, you know, when you're looking for E. coli or salmonella, you know, or any other pathogen, uh, you are trying to basically do it off of a Petri dish. And Petri dishes take many days. It takes a lot of time. It takes, it's relatively easy, but, and it's low cost, but it takes you know, and you, it can take any from three, five, even seven or up to 10 days, depending on what you're trying to culture. And that in the case of the cannabis industry with the, with the highly valuable uh, value added crop that we're talking about, you know, in the thousands of dollars per pound, you don't have that luxury of waiting 10 days or five days to know that you've got an outbreak in your cultivation facility or, or that your, uh, your plant is, is, you know, got some kind of plant disease. So what we've done is we've we basically not just sped up the process, but I want you to think about the fact that everything that you're testing in cannabis, they test for a lot more bugs than they do in food. Right. So in the case of cannabis, they test for uh, salmonella, which we're familiar with, E. coli, there's two different types of pathogenic E. coli called STEC1, STEC2, and then 
you know, when you're growing anything in soil within, uh, uh, you know, especially with cannabis, they, you have a lot of fungal pathogens such as Aspergillus, Flavus fumigatus, Niger, and Terrius. And I bounced off a lot there. But the bottom line is when you talk about six or seven organisms, you can't wait for every sample to have seven petri dishes for three, four, five days. So what we've done is we've done multiplexing. And multiplexing in a simple way uh, is where you're going all of those organisms in the same reaction, the same test, same sample. So you're, it's like parallel processing of all those targets, all those tar targeted pathogens in the same test rather than doing it one at a time. So we've flattened you know, Adam Smith's division of labor at like an assembly line. You know, that, that would take too, too long. By the time you get the answer, you may have lost half your crop. And that's the premise of our technology, which is already put into practice in over 110 labs nationally. So let me, so that's, I mean, it, it's, it's both uh, the time horizon that the time is now shorter, but also the, what you call the multi, did you call it multiplex or am I, am I making that word up? Like it's a movie well, no, theater. It's a, it's a multiplexing is the correct. Oh, so no. It applies to a movie theater. It applies to this. And, and do like, if I'm a grow, if I'm a cultivator and I have a grow, do I send you la like clippings and you tell me, or do like, is there something I do on site? What's, what's the process by which the, the testing gets done? So from a regulation perspective, depending on the jurisdiction, whether it's a state or even in, in uh, Canada, for example, that's overseen by, seen by Health Canada, <clears throat> generally speaking, there's a chain of custody and that chain of custody tags a sample. They basically secure it in, in, a, in, a, you know, in, in some kind of plastic bag. They seal it and it tra gets transported to a testing lab, an independent testing lab. And it's the independent testing lab that typically performs what is called compliance testing. Is this particular you know, product safe for sale to, to the end retailer, right? And so there's that portion of it that a grower has to submit samples if they want to be in the business of growing you know, cannabis and then selling it to, you know, in the dispensary end. And so there's compliance tests that, that relate to a bunch of pathogens. In the case of New York, there's almost 15 pathogens per sample that you have to go through. That's a lot of Petri dishes if you're running 100 samples a day, right? So likelihood the lab, the lab cannot be burdened by 1,500 Petri dishes. That's just not simply not scalable. It's not sustainable. It's unhealthy for a a lab tech to operate in that environment. Mm -hmm. The second part of our technology is sort of stemming it back. Why are pathogens winding up on cannabis that make it unhealthy? And what, what's, the, what's the reason for it? Why is it so important? Well, you and I, Jay, we're healthy. We can, you know, we can, you know, we can consume it, whatever, and we're okay. But if you're talking about an immunocompromised a uh, patient or a consumer, somebody who's gone through a organ transplant or, a, or cancer, right? They cannot take that chance. So having a bug like Aspergillus on, is on you know, any type of cannabis and they consume it could be deadly. And so that's one of the reasons why it's almost a zero tolerance component of having an abs absolute pure and safe product and a healthy product. The second part of it is when you're growing cannabis in a warehouse, you have certain elements, environmental elements, such as temperature, light, humidity, water, right? Those three, those are all right for specifically bugs, basically pathogens, especially with soil. So essentially what we have developed is what is called a product called EnviroX. And EnviroX will allow us to go, you know, send swabs directly to the grower the grower will basically swab certain locations that are high touch zones, the trim table, if there's you know, conveyor uh, machinery, if there's specifically drains, there are door handles. And the reason why you do this is because a lot of these pathogens are, they don't automatically or naturally glow, grow in the plant by themselves. Their sporulation, they start to go through the airflow and wind up on the canopy. By, by just the airflow. So we're, we have now developed, because of the COVID experience, we've developed an air collection device that can quickly identify what's in the air in a cannabis cultivation facility. 
what's on the surface and what's in the water very quickly. So then a cannabis cultivator will know what to remediate, what to sterilize to prevent the accumulation of those pathogens growing and then getting it still kicked out in the air. And that's called an environmental, preventative environmental monitoring program that minimizes the sample from going to a lab and then failing it, right? So control your environment, keep it clean. Therefore, the product that you grow in that environment will be safe and it'll pass your test. It's, 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 it's going upstream, it's upstream and downstream, right? Go, going yeah. to the, the source and making sure there aren't problems to begin with. It's, it's, it's fascinating. And, and you're right, it didn't take long for us to, to do geeky cannabis stuff. And, and I guess, I, I guess uh, sort of an overall question as, as you've been into this, like our growers, cultivators, and even manufacturers, processors, like are they becoming more savvy on this front to understand that to be upstream and do the testing that you're talking about, the preemptive environmental, oh, I, I forgot what the, I forgot, a monitoring program. Ooh, I got it, PEMP. Um, like are, are, they, are they understanding that that, that is a, a money well spent and processes well uh, put into place because it, it, it further down the line, it's, it saves time, energy, and lots of, uh, lots of headache. You know, I think we're turning a corner. And, and the reason why we're turning a corner is because just the, just the fact that initially they, they could not, um, we had some challenges to try to explain to them that when, you, when you're selling something in the thousands of dollars, right? And there's, there's 25,000 square feet of it. All you need is one square foot of that canopy to lose. And, and that's the equivalent of the testing preventive environmental monitoring for the entire year for their facility. So, um, and what's driving it now is that the, the, the gravitas is on the industry in the sense that more and more states is just like Canada are, 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 it's, you know, it's heading towards some level of federalization. We don't know when, but when federalization does happen, there are, there are agencies such as the FDA, the USDA, and OSHA that will mandate you to do preventive and environmental monitoring. And it's been the, re the, the reason that's driving that, Jay, is because if you and I are growing medical marijuana, what falls under the jurisdiction of the FDA is Food and Drug Administration. So some human's gonna consume it for medical purposes. So under that premise, what we're growing has to comply to CGMP good manufacturing practice, which I know you're nodding your head because Canada makes sure that's the case. Now, when you're doing CGMP, they're monitoring all your supply chain, right? They're monitoring a lot more testing and the same thing for HACCP. HACCP is called a hazard analysis critical control point. Anytime your product is touching a certain sur surface, you have to swab it and you have to identify if there's listeria, if there's E. coli, there's salmonella, there's these bugs there. And the reason why is that's, that's a, in many years ago, about back in 70s, pregnant women died of listeriosis, which was basically listeria was in product, which was a pathogen and they lost babies, right? So that, that's a story you don't wanna play out. But in the case of cannabis, what, what's driving this is that we think that at the end of the day, the, 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 the big MSOs, are definitely turning the corner, knowing that they have to implement this type of model to initiate, because when the feds finally come and say, you're going to swab every single area by zone one to zone four, you're gonna have CGMP, then it's gonna be a massive shock to the system. So the goal is for us to start to pivot this, start to set the standard with this type of technology. And it's not burdensome in just one well, we can identify up to 50 pathogens, both bacterial, fungal, for plant and human. And we made the cost so attractive that every grower should be doing this because if they clean up their environment, they'll be ready for the regulatory oversight at the federal level, and it'll be more of a natural shoe in for them in, from a or, you know, practice perspective. And, and they will have a head start. I mean, that's not lost yeah. on them, that there are only so many growers of certain scale that would be able to do something like this, do it early, do, do it before it's regulated. And then when it is, be sort of well ahead of the curve by a year or five, right? Yeah. Right, like uh, responding to the regs as they happen, you're already behind the ball of people who have 
who've actually been been uh, been thinking about her for a long time. This has been fascinating. I hope I didn't ask too too rudimentary a question. Oh, yeah, but, these are great questions. But it's it's really compelling. And and as you know, sort of the the compliance of the Canadian firms, do, you know, cultivating, manufacturing, processing cannabis is is quite a bit higher than than that's happening right now in most states. And I think you know that's a great leg up for Canadian companies, except companies that you're working with and companies in the states that are actually thinking one, two, and four years down the road are actually already going to be compliant to the highest standards that we have here uh, come federal legalization. But I appreciate the time. It was fascinating to hear about the company. We look forward to connect with you down the road. Thank you so much for this, uh, for this opportunity, Jay, and appreciate it. Thank you. you got it. That was BFC Live. If you like this program, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also find us wherever you find your podcasts. We're able to do what we do because of ongoing partnerships with Alterna Savings, Cannabis at Work, Cannabis Benchmarks, Can Delta, Gallagher, Headset, and Torque and Main. Find out all that we do at businessofcannabis.com.